called a living God. Because He is a sovereign Lord. So hope is not a giddy or a stagger or a naive optimism. Not some, you know, naive belief of optimism that God will eliminate all sufferings. Hope as a virtue is the conviction that God is sovereign. Our hope is a conviction that God is a sovereign Lord. Remember that, mga kapatid. Our hope is grounded on the one and true living God. I think we already studied before the 25 attributes of God. Right? And second of that attribute of God which pertains to His creation is what we call the divine sovereignty of God. When pandemic strikes the earth, we acknowledge that we are frail. Humankind are frail, right? And we submit to the sovereignty of God. So the divine sovereignty which has to do with the very way God rules His creation. And God's sovereignty may be concisely summed up as an absolute lordship. It is equivalent to kingship or dominion. God has absolute dominion over all things. He is the God of gods. That's what the Bible says. He is the King of kings. And He is the Lord of lords. And He is the Lord most high over all the earth. As Psalms 97 says, the great king over all the earth. And he rules over all flesh. Jeremiah 32, 27. And he rules over all mankind, all his creation, and all nations in the world. God reigns over the nations and God sits in his holy throne in heaven. Mga kapatid, that's why he is Sovereign. And the biblical term, specifically equivalent to sovereign, is kingdom. And the basic meaning of which is kingship, lordship, rule, dominion. And God's sovereignty is naturally and properly understood in terms of his kingship. The Lord reigns. That's the first uh, Chronicle 16, 31 steam. The Lord has established His throne in the heavens and His sovereignty rules over us all here on earth. That is the divine sovereignty of God. And sovereignty is the same as lordship. And it signifies the owner of something. For example, landlord. That is the original word for sovereign. Landlord. To say that God is the sovereign Lord over all things means that He owns everything on earth. Which gives Him the right to do what he chooses with it all. And even Moses, in Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 14, he says, Behold to the Lord your God belongs to the heavens and to the highest heavens and the earth and all that is in it, including the sky, the ground, and under the sea. That is how the Lord is sovereign. The earth is the Lord's and all it contains and those who dwell in it, including us. And even virus. Okay? 
God is sovereign. All in the earth. And this includes all peoples as well as all things and phenomenon under the sun. And the key word for sovereignty is control. Don't you know that God is in control? How come He is in control? Virus is spreading. How come? Right? So God is sovereign in the sense that He is in control of every event that takes place among His creatures. Whether He actually causes it, which is uh, you know, often the case, or simply permits it to happen instead of preventing it, which He could do it if He chooses. Either way, God is in charge. He is in full control over His creation. His sovereign in control of my life. Amen? So God is sovereign. It's not there will be tsunami or storms or sufferings. It's not that there will never be those things. No, no, no. It means ultimately that God is in charge of His creation including His church. And in that, I put my confidence in Him. Amen? Because God is sovereign, then I will cling that I will put my confidence in Him. Amen ho ba? Kahit anong mangyari, di ba, napakahirap ngayon, Pilipinas. Kahit uh, kamag-anak mo, hindi ka makauwi, kung siya ay uh, kinuha na ni Lord. Right? But because God is sovereign, I will put my confidence in Him. Do you put also your confidence in Him? We don't put our confidence on our leaders, on the economy, on the culture, or even pastors or elders or officers of the church. We don't put our confidence in them. Because we put our confidence only to the sovereign Lord because the church is His economy. And the second reason why our hope is a living hope is because it is grounded upon a living Savior whose resurrection from the dead guarantees that He will keep His promises to us. Mga kapatid, and Peter says, we are born again to a living hope, specifically to the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, in verse 3. And as the one who died for our sins and rose again, he is the one who has abolished death and brought life, immortality to light. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 20. And he declares, I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys of death, and Hades, the place of death. That is where we put our confidence. So whatever promises he makes to us, we can cling on them with absolute confidence and joyful expectations. Because He is the living Savior. Because He is a sovereign Lord who has overcome all His, including our enemies and including death. Amen ho ba? Lahat naman tayo pupunta doon. Di ba? It's just a matter of time. 
So we don't look our hope to our politicians or to the economy or to the culture or to Canada. I mean, you know, you can find little rays of good things there. Sure. But hope, we look for Christ because Jesus conquered death. Christ who died for us rose from the dead for our justification. Christ who is alive, who guides the church, is present to it. So keep your eyes fixed on Him. I know it's been it's been overwork this team. But you know, Peter walking on the water, and as long as he's looking at the Lord, he walks on the water. But here we're going through a pretty stormy right now. A stormy time right now. And Peter in the boat. With his disciples. That's always been image of church. Church and it's you. It's gone. This church has gone through rough times. We never jump off to the water. Because we fix our eyes on Christ. Because when we jump onto the waters. We sink to the lowest of the low. We only fix our eyes to Christ because He is our confidence in the future because He is the one who is the foundation of our hope. It's been pretty rough water. You and I have been living in this pandemic also. Mental health. You know, <laughs> because it's uh, one of the subjects that we are doing in Alberta Bible College right now is to encourage churches to include mental health in their church programs because of this uh, pandemic. That's why, Tayo, we are here. We just hear spiritual things, upliftment of our spirits, but we never incorporate mental health in our preaching and programs of the church. So it's been pretty rough water. You and I have been living in this stormy boat. Or sometimes we've been going through some rough, rough times. Because of this pandemic. Okay? But keep your eyes fixed on Christ. And you can walk on the surface of the waters. And it's when you look around at the waves, that's when you sink. So that's where we find, that's where we find our hope. We only find our hope in this alone. As to conclude this uh, this message, mga kapatid, I would like to read to you this, uh, this song written by Janie West Metzger. And this, uh, okay, I want to read this one to you. This is uh, an old, old hymn. I know all the oldies knows this song, but I want to narrate this one because in this old song written by Janie West Metzger, right? This is the description of the unfading, unwithering hope that we have in Christ. I am going to a city where the streets with gold are laid. Where the tree of life is blooming and the roses never fade. Amen? So where the tree of life is blooming and the roses never fade, loved ones gone to be with Jesus in their robes of white array. 
now are waiting for my coming. Where the roses never fade. Here they bloom. But for a season, soon their beauty is decay. I am going to a city where the roses never, ever. That's our hope, our enjoyment. That is our deep. Praise the Lord. Let all who have breath praise the Lord. Till heaven abounds with rejoicing. Oh, lift up your praise to the Lord. Oh, lift up your praise to